During my travels as an explorer and a biologist, I've been inspired by many people who are working tirelessly to better our world. In this series, I'm seeing how their vision is helping drive change and protect the planet, and what each of us can do to make a real difference. Eunice Olumide is a phenomenon. She's a polymath, an actor, author, a presenter, an eco-campaigner, an art gallery curator, and a supermodel. Her insights into the fashion and textiles industry have enabled fashion-conscious lovers of the planet to make informed choices about how their clothing has an impact on the natural world. Eunice, absolute pleasure to meet you. Uh, you've completely outdone me, unsurprisingly. <laughs> well. To be honest, um, I would disagree. I quite like your swag. You're looking quite fabulous. Growing up, were you having conversations about saving the world or, or, or where were your early influences? So for me personally, I think the first time I really thought about the impact on the environment that our behaviour um, created by, I suppose, our day-to-day -day consumption was I was about eight years old and I had gone to West Africa where my mum was from and I'd gone to the beach and I just remember seeing like this Walker's packet of crisps and like, that should not be here and so I as a little child I still understood that this was something that I couldn't purchase where I was and I didn't understand why it was there it was definitely the start of my journey in understanding how pollution works, how waste works, how important it is for us to dispose of our waste properly, efficiently, effectively. You've obviously broken away from that tradition of people being detached from the environment somewhat. You've made it your career and, and your life mission. So has there been any pushback? I've been doing this type of work for more than a decade. Um, I was an ambassador for Zero Waste Scotland. I worked a lot with Climate Revolution, with Vivian Westwood organised many protests, one with 70,000 people, which we took to Westminster. Amazing. So, you know, it's something that is a central part of my identity. It really factors into my work and how I dress and what I dress, what I wear, where I go, how I travel. So quite, I don't know if this is quite crazy, but for some reason, I decided I wasn't going to drive a car. This was, this was like my contribution. Yeah. So I never, I never, I've never driven a car. I've never owned a car. Um, I always use public transport. Because I work in fashion and I do fly and I felt like, okay, this is how I'm going to offset the things that I can't change. So if I go to New York, like I have to fly there. I'm constantly trying to find ways to balance and reduce my personal carbon footprint. But if everyone just does the little bit that they can do, then that has such a profound impact on the environment. Totally. Um, so, for example, the dress I'm wearing, this is my 58th wear, not in a row, so, before uh, yeah. you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be realistic. And this is the thing that I love about coming from a really working class background, is you really understand the issues that people are having to negotiate on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. One is not always going to have enough money to go out and buy, you know, really good shoes. Unless it's really communicated the benefits of that, we are going to buy clothes cheaply. People are not going to stop purchasing textiles which are damaging the environment overnight, particularly because the rate and the ability of many of the brands and the organisations, particularly in fashion, when it comes to fast fashion, yeah. their reach is so profound and they tap into real genuine insecurities that people have um, and they exploit that. We would need a lot more cooperation um, we would lead a lot more regulation around advertising and marketing, kind of like controlling the way that these brands can connect with, say, television shows. So there does need to be much more regulation around that, how influencers work, how they advertise and sell products. But putting that to the side, you know, people are going to wear a fast fashion. So we need to educate more around what can we do to reduce the um, 
environmental impact. So I mentioned about me wearing this dress uh, 58 times and that's because we really should be wearing any clothes which are cheaply made or are um, synthetic at least 30 times. Yeah. And then we should be looking at how can we recycle these clothes and use them for something else. So one thing I like to do, for example, is things like cushions. So I will like fill cushions with like old clothes, which I cut up. Great idea. Um, you know, there's so many different things you can do yeah. rather than throw clothes in the bin. The fashion industry's business model is predicated on people buying more stuff. So can that change from fast fashion to slow fashion come from within the industry? And are, are there companies that are really pushing this or does it have to come from, from influencers and from regulation? Well, the answer to your question is 100% yes, it can change. We lived as human beings on this earth for a significant period of time without fast fashion. It's a really new invention and it's actually over time more expensive. And a lot of the time the clothes are not actually made well enough. So you do need to keep purchasing and that is the reason they're probably made in that way. Um, but I do think that it's so lucrative. So it's more of a, a clash between social morality, if I could call it that, and our obligations, if any, it's a question of, does it matter? Do we care? Yes, it matters. I care. Right. I just hope enough people do. That's a, and that's what we need is enough yeah. people to care. We, we've got a situation recently where a lot of pressure coming from consumers getting fashion companies to change. Like Canada Goose no longer trapping wild animals for fur. That's huge, that type of impact. So I think that shows the power of the consumer. 100%. And I think that it has to come from both sides. It has to come, the consumer needs to put pressure on the industry, on brands, on companies to be more ethical, to care more about the environment and to sell products which are less damaging. I did this Vox Pop once. And I was just like running around asking people in the street, you know, what do you think is the biggest polluter in the world? And they were like, no one said textile at all. It didn't even factor in. So that tells us that the average everyday person really does not understand the connection between the textile industry and the impact on the environment. So I really do believe that if they did understand that people wouldn't actually mind paying a little bit more for what we need. And if we can at least get as many people as possible into that mindset, then that's gonna significantly reduce. As well as us, again, doing, being conscious and educating about, you know, how these clothes are made, the fact that it's not a nice process, it's not good for the people who are making the clothes. And actually, as soon as we put these clothes in the washing machine, we are all guilty of destroying the environment. We do need to hand wash more. We don't need to put everything in a washing machine because we're using huge amounts of water and we're producing things that we can't even really see that are going into our water supply, which then end up in the food chain as well. In layperson's terms, can you explain to me the, the negative impact that the fashion industry is currently having on the climate, on society. One of the biggest issues for me when I look at brands, for example, in our part of the world, is the, the, the supply chain and the manufacturing chain, there's significant issues there. Mm. Because what's happening a lot of the time is they're subcontracting to other companies in other parts of the world, which is cheaper for them to manufacture. And they might have quite strict rules, but the companies they're subcontracting to might not. Mm. And therefore it's at that stage where a lot of the pollution actually happens, whether that's, you know, dyes going into the sea or into the water supply. And that inadvertently affects all of us all over the planet. So you can have brands over here claiming to be sustainable, claiming to care about the environment, but actually their entire process needs to be changed. You have loads of amazing companies in the UK, such as The Body Shop or Tom's, who really make it a central component of their business to ensure that there is a level of um, environment, that they control their carbon footprint and the impact on the environment, as well as ensure 
that the people who are working for them in these countries are looked after properly, either in a cooperative manner or in another capacity. So we really need all brands to be that thorough. That would really, really um, go a long way to alleviating you know, some of the really serious pressure that we're under. When people from outside are potentially shining a light on these companies for the negative practices, if you, if you pitch it as actually these are opportunities for you to have a positive impact, as opposed to this is all the bad stuff you're doing, you're saying, well, here's an opportunity for you to reduce your environmental impact. Exactly. And I think that that is the way that we have to position it when we speak to companies, when we speak to brands. Otherwise, they're going to feel like we're attacking them. Yeah. And ultimately, they're just doing what everyone else is doing within a capitalist society, you know? So it's quite difficult because they're just looking at their profit and they're thinking, oh, if I do this, I'm not going to make as much money, which is a shame because, you know, there's only so much money one can make. And most of these companies make a lot of money already. So you've been a model for a lot of big big brands, big fashion houses, etc. How much influence did you feel that you could exert on them from that position? Or, or really, do you have to have your own label to start to make a big impact? You don't really have a lot of power as a fashion model. I've got to be honest, it's quite damaging to your career, like taking a stance on anything. It has changed a lot over the last, say, three to five years. We've seen a huge influx of all different types of models, curve models, plus size models, um, models who wear hijab. So now it is much more acceptable to have beliefs and to stand for something. But when I was um, starting out in the industry and over throughout my career, it has never really been appropriate to voice your beliefs. Mm. But I did it anyway, because, yeah. you know, that's how I roll. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So it was quite annoying because people will say you're difficult to work with, but you're not difficult, you just care. Uh, but that is seen as negative as opposed to positive. So I've done my best and I think that there are quite a lot of other models who are really into protecting and preserving the environment as well. So um, yeah, I think everyone, if everyone does their best within their industry, then we can really change things. For me, one of the things that I identified like kind of early in my career and just literally talking to people in the area where I grew up is there is a huge stigma around wearing secondhand clothes, wearing hand-me-downs, which is not the case in the past. Like it was quite normal to wear your big sister's dresses or shoes, but now you can't. Mm. And I do genuinely feel like a lot of the marketing and the aggressive advertising is really responsible for this and what's happened is there's almost like a stigma around it so for me i'm really passionate about rewearing reusing and recycling and i go out of my way to demonstrate that actually you don't need to spend loads of money you just need to think a little bit out of the box and there are amazing things in secondhand shops in charity shops in thrift shops as well with your your activism your, your wanting to target your consumers, your, your purchase of fashion, or are you wanting to target the fashion houses and, and the marketeers, the people that are doing this aggressive advertising, or are, you, or are you scattergun trying to nail them all? I do a lot of work with the people mm. who other people don't, are not able to reach. Mm. Um, I have done quite a lot of work on the other side. I spoke at Westminster, which led to the first kind of proper investigation of the textile industry. You know, the reality is, it is the second biggest polluter in the world. That's insane. So it's, it's extremely urgent that we do something about this. No one's saying don't buy clothes. You can buy whatever you want. You just need to really think about how you wear the clothes, how much you wear the clothes, how you wash the clothes and how you dispose of the clothes. Those are the things that every single person, regardless of their income, can alter and can adjust and can change. We can't simply just throw things in the bin because it goes somewhere. Everything we throw away ends up somewhere and that is being landfilled at a rate of more than 350,000 tonnes a year. So that is not sustainable and we need to live. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to die, people. I think it's amazing that this all started with you finding a bit of litter 
on a beach in West Africa that shouldn't be there. You are making a difference. You're encouraging other people to make a difference as well. Thank you so much for, it's for coming amazing. in. It's been it was great chatting amazing to you. talking to you. I had so much fun.